In this video, we're going to take a look at families of polynomial functions. And so uh, graphing functions uh, explain what families means. So in the first example, we're asked to consider the quadratic relations y equals a, x plus 5, x minus 1. Now, there's two different factors here, and each factor produces an x-intercept or a root. And so if we set each to 0, we'll get what the x-intercepts are. So if we set x plus 5 to 0, you would get negative 5. So that's why it goes through the axis at negative 5 each graph. And if you set x minus 1 equal to 0, 1 makes that a, have to have a value of 0. 1 minus 1 to 0. So that's why they also go through at 1. So the uh, x-intercepts are at 1 and negative 5. Now the axis of symmetry is this vertical line right in the middle between the two points. So it's actually six units from negative five to positive one. So half of six would be three. These are all parabolas or quadratic functions. And so this axis of symmetry is three units to the left of one or three units to the right of the negative five, which would be at x equals negative two. Now in C here, we're asked to find the equation of the green curve. There's no particular reason I chose the green one. We could have done the blue one or this one as well. It wouldn't matter. But we're just, I had to pick one. So in order to find the equation for the green curve, we need to identify a point that we know is on the curve. And we can't actually use one of the intercepts. They don't actually allow us to solve for the value of A. See, once you know A, then you actually know the entire equations. Equation. Now, a point on the curve, for example, is this point negative 2, negative 4. So if you start at the origin, go left 2 and down 4. That's the point on the curve. You don't, don't actually have to choose the vertex of the curve. You could choose some other point here, uh, but that's one point that we could use. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this point and substitute it into the equation. So there's the equation again. And so negative 4 is the y, so we're going to put negative 4 here, and then negative 2 is the x, we'll put negative 2 here and also here. And we'll solve for a. So in this set of brackets, that's positive 3, and that's negative 3. So if we multiply 3 by negative 3, you get negative 9. So negative 9a we would equal negative 4. And if we divide both sides by negative 9, well, we get a to be 4 ninths. So notice it's positive because a negative divided by negative gives you a positive value. And so the equation, we're just going to substitute that 4 ninths in place of a here. So it would be y equals 4 ninths x plus 5 times x minus 1 would be the equation of that green curve. So in order to find a specific uh, equation for a specific curve, all you need is a point on the curve. The reason the intercepts don't work is if I were to substitute, let's say, negative 5, 0, negative 5, comma, 0 here, I would put um, negative 5 in place of y, or sorry, 0 in place of y, because that's the y coordinate. And when I put negative 5 in place of x here, that makes this factor have a value of 0. And so 0 times anything is 0, so this whole side would, would become 0, and we wouldn't actually be able to solve for a. So we don't need a, we don't want a number that will make either this factor or this factor zero. Of course, the, the one zero point would make uh, that factor zero. In example number two, uh, the following three graphs are all cubic functions with zeros at negative two, zero, and positive two. And we're asked to find the equation to model this family of cubic polynomials, and then we'll talk about a specific one, the, the red graph specifically. So since it's cubic, an equation for this family could be y equals ax. Uh, because there is a 0 of 0, or a root of 0, then that's where the x factor comes from. The x plus 2 factor comes from the fact that there's a 0 at negative 2, because negative 2 makes that have a value of 0. And positive 2 makes this have a value of 0. So that's why x minus 2 would also be a factor. It's cubic, so you should expect a 3 uh, linear factors. Now the a is just a stretch factor, so uh, it makes it steeper or even upside down if a happened to be a negative compared to uh, these all positive cubics. Now if we want to find a specific equation for the red curve, then we need to identify a point on it. So we could, for example, use that point that's pretty specifically on it, or the negative 1, 4 point. That's the one I'm actually going to use. 
So we'll substitute 4 in place of y and negative 1 in place of x in all three places. So there's the equation again. If we substitute the 4 in place of y and negative 1 here, here, and here, that's what it looks like. And we need to solve for a. So negative 1 plus 2 would be 1. Negative 1 minus 2 would be negative 3. And we multiply negative 3 by negative 1 by 1, we get 3. So 4 would equal 3a. And if we divide both sides by 3, uh, we get 4 over 3, or 4 thirds for the value of a. So an equation for the red curve, if we substitute this in place of a here, would be y equals 4 thirds x, x plus 2, x minus 2. So that's a, a one, one way we can write the equation for the red curve. In example number three, uh, a polynomial function has zeros at plus or minus three and at four plus or minus the root of two. So two different zeros here, two different zeros here. So since there's four zeros, we should expect this to be a quartic or fourth power polynomial. So since there's zeros at positive and negative 3, we would go y equals, and I use k here instead of a. It doesn't really matter what constant you use. So x minus 3 times x plus 3, that's from the plus or minus 3. And from the 4 plus or minus the root of 2, it would be x minus the 4 plus root 2 and x minus the 4 minus root 2. So x minus each root. And so those are the, those are the four different factors uh, giving that it will be a quartic or fourth power polynomial. So let's expand this out. And so x minus 3 times x plus 3 is x squared minus 9. Now when we multiply these together, x multiplied by x will give us x squared. So I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just multiplying two binomials together. They're really binomials. So this x times this x is x squared. And if we multiply that x, by 4 minus root 2. Now don't forget there's a negative here. So when we multiply x by, it's really negative 4, and I didn't mean to do that one yet, we would get negative 4x, and x times negative negative root 2, well that's going to give you a positive, so that's why it's root 2 times x. So I've multiplied that x by each part over here. Now I'll multiply this negative 4 plus root 2 by each part. So negative 4 plus root 2 times the x. Well, it's really negative 4 times x, so that's going to be minus 4x. And this would be negative root 2 times x, so it's negative root 2x. And then we need to multiply this by this. So let's do that separately here. Now, notice that we actually have a negative times a negative here. So we actually can drop those two negatives because a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's why it's really just 4 plus root 2 times 4 minus root 2. So expanding these together, so 4 multiplied by 4 would be 16. And then this 4 multiplied by the negative root 2 would be minus 4 root 2. And then this root 2 times this 4 would be plus 4 root 2. Notice that they're opposites. They're going to add to 0. And this root 2 times this negative root 2 gives us negative 2. It's actually negative the root of 4, but the root of 4 is 2. So these add to 0, and so we really just have 16 minus 2, which is 14. So that product in the end actually all simplifies to just positive 14. So plus 14 in the end. Now notice we have some other stuff that's going to simplify. For example, this root 2x and negative root 2x, they will also add to 0. And then we can combine the two negative 4x's together. So k, y equals k, x squared minus 9. And then that's going to be minus 8x and then plus the 14, of course, after the x squared. And so if we uh, expand this out, now I'm just going to multiply these together. I'm just going to put it in standard form. And so x squared times, actually I'll write it the whole thing, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, x squared times negative 8x is minus 8x cubed, and x squared times the 14 would be plus 14x squared. And then the negative 9 times each, so negative 9x squared, this would be plus 72x, and negative 9 times 14 is minus 126. And then we can combine a couple of like terms here. 
So 14, well, the first two stay the same. 14x squared minus 9x squared is 5x squared plus a 72x minus 126. I could also expand the k in, but I'm kind of writing it in family form, if there is really a family form. And then uh, we're asked to find the equation for this polynomial family, in this family, that passes through the point 2 comma 20. So just like the other examples, we'll substitute 20 in place of y and 2 in place of x. And so it would look like this. So there's the 2 substitute in place of x. And so we need to simplify all this. So 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 cubed would be 8 times this negative 8 is minus 64. Uh, 2 squared is 4 times 5 is 20. 72 times 2 is 144, and then the minus 126. If we uh, add and subtract all these numbers, we get, uh, works out to negative 10. So 20 equals negative 10k, and then dividing out the negative 10, we would get k to be negative 2. So if we substitute negative 2 in place of k here, then this is what the uh, polynomial specific equation would be. And of course, we can expand the negative 2 in to write it in, in complete standard form. So that's the uh, standard form equation for this uh, member of the family of polynomials that goes through the, the point 2, comma 20. Okay, last example, number 4 here. We're asked to find the equation for the polynomial shown in the graph to the right. So, your, uh, so in this case, we're not we're not told specifically uh, or given a whole bunch of graphs in a particular family, but asked to find this particular one. Now notice the shape of it. If you studied polynomials at all, it actually turns once, twice, three times. It's the shape of uh, like a W, so it's a quartic graph. Um, it has a maximum of, uh, uh, could have four zeros. It actually has a double root here and has zeros at zero and positive one. So there actually are uh, four roots here, but there's a double root at the uh, negative three. So double root at negative three, and then the other zeros are at uh, one and zero. And so uh, the general equation of this family would be y equals a x x plus 3 squared because of double root and then x minus 1. The uh, x here comes from the root of 0. The 1 comes from or gives us the x minus 1 factor. So we need to identify a specific point on this graph and I'm going to use this point here. Notice the scale on the x-axis is every block is 1 but on every block on the y-axis is 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, see so there's 10. So that would have a y-coordinate of 12. So that would be the point uh, negative 2 comma 12. And so we'll substitute 12 in for y and negative 2 in for x. And so that's what it looks like. So in this set of brackets, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. If we multiply negative 2, 1, and negative 3 together, we get 6. So 12 equals 6a. Dividing out the 6, we would get a to be 2. And so we can substitute the 2 in place of a here. And then that's going to give us the specific equation for this graph. So it's y equals 2x, x plus 3 squared times x minus 1. And of course, if we want to expand this and put it in standard form, we could. It's in a nice factored form right now, so I'm just going to leave it in that form. And that's the end of the video.